So I'm here in the water cube uh, with a special guest, uh, Felgona. Uh, well, please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Felgono Ching from Water Services Trust Fund Kenya. This is an institution that was formed after water reforms in Kenya in 2002 and we are, we are under the Ministry of Water and Irrigation. So our main work is to source for finances for the urban poor, for water and sanitation. So that is why we thought it was a good opportunity to come to the Stockholm Water Week 2011 mm -hmm. so that we can meet partners, share experiences and also learn from them how we can improve the challenges we are, we are experiencing in Kenya. So far we have various projects under urban window. We fund through two other uh, windows which is urban, uh, which is rural and uh, water resources management. So under urban we've been doing what we call Maji Data. Maji data is basically a data of And Maji, uh, and, uh, what does it mean? Maji means water in Swahili. Exactly. So we are collecting data from all the towns, big and small in Kenya, which is about 1,881 towns. And uh, we've uh, basically collected the data in, uh, in urban low poor areas. And it has approximately about 5.1 million people, wow. according to, to, to the data we've collected. Mm -hmm. So we have that information. We are posting it websi on website so that our implementing agency, we don't implement projects, we just finance can be able to know when they're doing the proposal how many people are there mm -hmm. and what is the best uh, value for money project they can have in the area, both water and public sanitation. We are also upscaling public sanitation with the funds from uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, KFW, GIZ. And basically we want to reach around 800 million people wow. in our upscaling. Yeah? We are also doing uh, water projects through what we call calls for proposal. Yeah. We've done uh, three so far, and the fourth one, uh, we've just advertised for it and we'll be implementing it soon. Through that, we've reached just under 700 million people, and this one we advertise in the media, and it's demand-driven, so the, the communities know the process to use, then they have to go to the water boards uh, which have been formed to write for them the proposal and send it to us. Okay. Uh, other than that, in the rural areas, which is also about 50% uh, uh, don't have access to water and sanitation. So we also do that through the rural communities, but this is also community driven. They have to come together, uh, organize themselves and form a community based organization so that we can finance them. And this one, basically, we've been able to also reach uh, just under a million people through uh, water projects. And these are basically in remote areas where people have to walk for more than one kilometer to get water. And uh, under water resources management, we've also been uh, financed by partners like uh, SIDA, where we've been able to basically bring communities together so that they can uh, uh, conserve water. And these are basically communities living under certain uh, the, the, the certain water areas like the rivers in the regions uh, in Kenya and there are like eight regions so every region where the lake passes through basically then uh, they, they can form uh, a, a group and they can mm -hmm. benefit from that and that includes uh, planting trees and also basically coming up uh, with uh, mechanisms to conserve water and stop cutting trees, which is the main, main problem we have in Africa and Kenya in particular. Yeah, especially the, for the charcoal and everything. Yeah, yeah, which is also a source of income for them. So mm. that is one of the big challenges we are having, and that is why we are having the problem with the Mao forest in Kenya, because uh, we also have communities living in it. And when they live in it, they have to cut trees, they have to construct their houses, and basically it also affects the wetland. So that is what we've been doing at Water Services Trust Fund. Okay, sounds like you're doing a lot. Yeah, and we have, a, at times, we have constraints financially because mm -hmm. we have to look for the funds. And, yeah. yeah. So at times, we have the constraints of getting money to basically finance the projects and also because they're community-driven, you know, the challenges and the characteristics of poor communities. They're not able to come together and uh, basically organize them to fund because that is the procedure and that mm -hmm. is a procedure for accountability purposes because the money we give to the communities for rural areas goes directly to their accounts. So they have to organize themselves. If they don't do that, then they're not able to, to benefit. So we've been trying to do also awareness campaigns so that we can tell them there is money here and this is the procedure to follow. And uh, through that, we've been able to receive more and more Kenyans now know about it. And uh, at times we have a challenge of having so much demand and no money. Yeah. So those are the, some of the things we're trying to balance. And we hope that by the end of the 
the week and the Stockholm Water Week, we are able to get new partners and basically we'll be able also to go back to Kenya with new experiences on how we can get uh, innovation uh, on sanitation and also how the communities can be involved more and so that we can improve on water and sanitation so that we don't have 60% of the population with no access to water and also 40% uh, without sanitation. Okay, well much. thank you very much for this interview. Uh, hope you have a good time. Thank you, I will. Definitely.